Welcome, 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 my brothers and sisters. I am Elder Derek Strickland. I want to welcome you to the Bible Lessons and Prayers YouTube channel and Facebook group. This is another week. This is another day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I am so glad to be bringing you this um, week's um, brand Bible band overview. Um, we got a very, very good um, subject because we live in some times right now where things can be very trying. Like people are getting tried every day, like the trying of your faith and and, and um, just dealing with people and um, things not necessarily going the way they should go. And it's very easy to be frustrated in these type of times. And um, today's lesson is called the danger of frustration. And um, I, I guess uh, thank you all for um, coming here and, and checking it out and uh, checking out this overview. And but before we get into that, if you want to be a part of the Facebook group, there's a link down in the description. And if you want to give to this um, to this channel, ministry, or however you want to call it, um, there's a cash out there. Now, you're probably saying, well, excuse me, what, what are the funds going for with cash out? Uh, at this point right now, we are uh, running some initiatives where we're going to be giving back to the community, whether it's in the form of... Uh, free backpack giveaways and, you know, feeding the children, um, which we did last week, and it was a very good success. Or um, it's going to go towards um, just, uh, like, um, feeding the hungry, or it's going to go towards um, a cold drive that we're planning. So um, definitely all the help that we can get, it would be, we would be so grateful and we would be thankful for anyone that would want to give. Now, there's a cash app in the description. If you want to give, just put Bible lessons there. And all of the cash apps that come in that says Bible lessons, we will take those funds for those initiatives, for those, uh, excuse me, for those programs where we're actually giving back to the community and uh, taking care of things for the ministry of uh, Jesus Christ. So that being said, um, man, listen, this is a great week. Like for real, if you know God has been good to you, right? Put an amen down in the comment section. Like, let me know where you're watching me from. Let me know what church you go to and what state, you know, what state you're watching from. It's always good to um, know those type of things. So uh, let me say a short word of prayer. We're going to get down to business. All right. Kind of Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for our point in your spirit, Lord. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. Now, Lord, I ask that you be with us, God, and help us to understand um, this lesson on today. Lord, I ask that you help us to deal with our frustrations. Help us to know what to do, say, and think when frustration comes. Lord, I just ask that you would help us and lead us and guide us. Look over each and every person, God, that is uh, watching this. Bless their home. Bless their finances. Bless their relationship, bless their health. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you and give your name and praise and glory and honor. We bless you actually in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. All right. So um, they will uh we will be going over first of all, numbers. We got uh three scriptures. We I mean three, yeah, three scriptures we're gonna be going over. Numbers 14, 45. Um, Judges 4.15 and excuse me, Proverbs 15.22. All right, so uh, let's get into the background reading and um, we'll go from there. All right, Numbers uh, chapter 14, uh, 45th verse, it reads, then um, the, Am the Amalekites, <laughs> Amalekites came down and the Canaanites which dwelt in that hill and smoked them and discomfit discomfited them. And even unto, excuse me, even unto Homura, excuse me. All right, let me read that again. Then the Amalekites came down and the Canaanites which dwelt in that hill and smote them and discomfited them and, I mean, not and, sorry, even unto Homura. All right, let's go to the next one. Judges 4 and 15. And the Lord discomfited Caesarea, Caesarea, and all his chariots. And all his hosts with the edge of the sword before Barak, so that Sisera light, lighted down off his chariot and fled on his feet. In other words, the Lord did something to him. He was like, Let me get off this horse. And, um, you know, and ran. He ran away. 
right? Uh, so, and the Lord discomfited uh, Sisera and his chariots and all his hosts with the edge of the sword before Barak. Yeah, yeah, the Lord pretty much was about to get him and he, ran, he, he fled away on his feet. He ran away. So let's go to the next one. Proverbs 15, 22. Without counsel, purposes, without counsel, pur purpose, are disappointed, but in the multitude of counselors they are established. Without counsel, purpose are disappointed, but in the multitude of counselors they are established. All right, so those are three <clears throat> scriptures we're going to read. Y'all have to excuse me. I, I'm dealing with a cold, a cough, and uh, I just can't get over it. So every year I, I deal with this cough, but uh, uh, I know the saints are praying for me that I can uh, get over this, all right? So let's get off into this, all right? Frustration is, frustration is a responsible response to opposition, fueled by anger, annoyance, or disappointments. Many believers find themselves out of the will of God when they allow these emotions to control their actions. Have you ever did that? Have you ever allowed your actions to, have you ever allowed people to punch your buttons? Like to say something or do something that will elicit a response, right, from you. Right. When you do that, you are literally giving over power to someone else, right? So um the Lord has let each believer know that his grace is enough to cover whatever he needs. Sometimes the believer gets so angry that they lose all sense of control of their emotion. Things do get bad. And sometimes out of control. So when this happens, the believer should never allow himself to become so frustrated that he becomes a fool. Anger rests in the bosom of fools. And the Lord cautions the believer to be angry, but not allow the anger that calls him to sin. I believe the scripture says, be angry and sin not. All right. Paul knew the, Paul knew the danger of getting frustrated. He knew that if frustration is not checked, it can become deadly and dangerous. Paul had given his all to Jesus and had become subject to the will of God. He was a man of strong character and extremely focused on what to do in ministry. And he had, his, and he had humbled himself to his Lord. He was opposed and fought from within and from without, without a pause. Without a false. This behavior from others, especially other believers, was very disturbing and caused him to be very discomfited. But Paul knew what God had done for him. He knew the depth of his deliverance God had given him. He knew that he was no longer the same Saul who wanted to persecute God's believer. He knew that he did not deserve the mercy and grace that God had given to him. He was determined to stay level-headed. In other words, Paul remembered when he was doing what he was doing, and he knew that what he did in the past was wrong, and that the grace and mercy that God gave towards him, he was like, I'm not worthy. And, and it's a very humbling experience when you can realize that God has done more for you than you could ever do for yourself, and it's very humbling, all right? He knew that he could not go back to trying to keep the rules of the law or the peer pleasing, um, peer pleasing religion, for that would be an abandonment of everything personal and free in his new relationship with God. He knew that his the Marcus Road experience, Damascus Road experience would allow would have all been in vain. He knew he, he would not allow Christ's death to be in vain for him. Paul decided that he would not frustrate the grace of God. It is important for believers to remember where God has brought them uh, from to know where the new creature to know that they are new creatures because of God's grace. Many times because the believer desires to please up uh, many times because of desire to please others and to be accepted in a clique, believers fail to operate in the freedom of pleasing God. It seems like God's grace is not enough for them. It is a very frustrating position for a believer to be in when he is trying to please God and not man. This put him in a position to be 
to become completely cut off from God. This right here is very, very, very serious. All right now, I'm, I'm gonna read this again. I'm gonna take it a little bit slower because we wanna, we wanna, we wanna kind of get into this a little bit, not just like an overview, but let's get get into this. It is important for believers to remember what God has brought them from to know that they are new creatures because of God's grace. Do you remember when? Do you remember what God has brought you out of, right? A lot of times we become, we, when we become new creatures in Christ, we sometimes people tend to forget just last week the struggle you had with drugs. Just last week, the struggle you had with pornography. Just last week, the struggle you had with alcoholism. Just last week, the struggle you had with pride. Just last week, you, the struggle you had with your husband. Just last week, the struggle you had with your wife, your children. Just last week, the struggle you had with self-doubt and, and, and uh, uh, you know, just being, uh, uh, you know, just down and out, depression. That's it. The struggle you had with depression. Because you are a new creature in Christ don't mean you forget all of that. All right. You know, these are the issues that you deal with. Right. And you got to remember that. All right. Uh, many times because of the desire to please others and to be accepted in the clique, believers fail, fail to operate in the freedom of pleasing God. Oh, my goodness. That I don't know about you. I don't know where you go to church or where you grew up from, but just about in all churches, there may be some cliques. This group here and that group there, God is not pleased. The body of God, the body of Christ is one body, <laughs> one body, not these little cliques here and there. The body of believers is one body, right? And if you're not careful, if you get caught up in what other people are saying of you, if you start to believe your own press, you will start to do things to please those that are uh, in authority, those that you perceive that have power so that you can get a, a favorable response. Because in your mind, a favorable response from those men that you perceive have the power, a favorable response from them, you would think that that's a favorable response response from God. And it's very easy to uh, uh, get off into. Uh, just a quick note, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recommend a book for you all to read. It's a book called A Church Called Tove. A Church Called Tove, that, that book right there, it will set you, set you straight, set you free on a lot of things as it relates to um, um, wanting to be accepted in cliques, and especially within the church setting. All right, so I'm going to read that sentence one more time. Because of the desire to please others and to be accepted in the clique, believers fail to operate in the freedom of pleasing God. It seems like God's grace is not enough for them. Whoa. God's grace is more than enough. All right? It is very frustrating. It's, it is a very frustrating position for a believer to be in when he's trying to please God and man. This puts them in a position to become, to become completely cut off from God. Oh, my God. Abort, abort, abort. You don't want to get out there and try to please men to the effect that you are completely cut off from God. So many times the other nations rose up against God and his people. Some of them, like Sisera, were skilled at what they did. But when they frustrate God's plan for his people, they suffer a dear consequence. The Borah told Barak that God had given him victory over Sisera. Barak charged down the slopes of Mount Tobar with his troops. And God rerouted Sisera and his troops and caused Sisera to jump out of his chariot and run. Barak chased him until he ran to the tent of jail who invited him in to take her tent. He asked for water, but jail gave him milk and covered him up. He fell asleep and jail took the tent pig and drove it through his temple into the ground. He convulsed and died. Whoa. 
Whoa. Whoa. Brought him in the temple. Thought he was safe. Hey, can I get some, can I get some water? No, I'll take this milk. Boom, fell asleep. Boom, dead. <laughs> God always looked out for his people when they just trust him. They always come out winners. When the children of Israel were rebuilding their temple during the days of Zerubbabel, the, the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin came to them and offered to help them rebuild. But they came to frustrate the purpose of the children of Israel. It is dangerous to fall into the hands, fall into God's hand when you have made him angry. When the enemy tried to try and failed, they thought they had another plan. They began to weaken the hands of the people of Judah and trouble them in a building. They hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose. They kept bothering them until they wrote a, a serious with acquisition, accusations against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. They even sent letters to the king until they finally got action done, action to stop, to start the building, stop the building based on lies. Finally, finally, the works was resumed and the eyes of the Lord were upon the Jews until the matter came to Darius, who led, who led to King Cyrus and the temple was built. Sometimes, <laughs> Sometimes it may take some time. But when God is for you, he's more than the world against you. All right. My brothers and sisters, in conclusion, in the book of Numbers, Moses sent out 12 men to spy out the land for 40 days. After 40 days ended, they came back and 10 of them gave a false report, which caused the people to become discontented and grumble against Moses. God allowed these 10 men to die and they plagued that he sent. Only two men were left who gave an honest report. After the people mourned, they let Moses know that they were ready to continue the journey and attack the land that God had promised them. But they had forgotten that God had told them that because of the bad report, they would be punished for 40 years, which was a year for each day. Moses asked them why they were crossing God, why they were crossing God's command again. He told them that God was no longer with them and they would that they would be beaten badly for their enemy by their enemies. They went away, and the Ammonites and the Canaanites who lived in the hills beat them badly, and they were discomfited. They would not receive God's blessing and pay a dear price for their disobedience. When the believer frustrates, when the believer frustrates the plan of God, they can expect disaster. Mm. The since you thought, my brothers and sisters, for this lesson is when the enemy frustrates God's plan for his people, the enemy suffers the wrath of God. We got four questions for you. You can put it right down in the comment section. Um, why did Paul decide not to frustrate God's grace? Why did Paul decide not to frustrate God's grace? What happened during Moses' leadership that caused God to be frustrated? Number three, what were the results of that frustration? And number four, what happened to Caesarea? 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 When he frustrated God's plan for Deborah, Barak, and God's people. All right, once again, um, thank you all for, for coming to this Bible lesson today. I uh, pray that everything has been going well for you up until this point. Uh, do me a favor, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, smash the like button. And uh, man, uh, let me know for real. Like, if you got any questions about this lesson, you definitely want to put that down in the comment section. Also, um, if you want to be a part of the Facebook group, there's a link in the description. If you want to give to you know these causes that we're we're going out into the community and helping, there's a um, Cash App link right. The Cash App, not not a link, but the Cash App name right there. Um, put Bible lessons, Bible lessons, and those funds will be derouted to these um, different initiatives, whether it's we do some more uh, feeding of the the, uh, the community or um, if we do a coat drive, we do something for Thanksgiving, um, those type of things. Um, that's what we're building up funds right now to do. And everything you do, we greatly appreciate it and we are very thankful. All right, so that be it. Uh, you all will see me next week, Tuesday, 
And it's another great lesson, the making of a disciple, the making of a disciple. All right. So is that me all? I'll close you out with a closing prayer and we'll be done. Kind of Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for our point of your spirit, Lord. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. Lord, just ask that you help each and every one of us, Lord, be uh, careful when frustration comes up, Lord. Help us to not frustrate um, uh, your plan for us, Lord. I just ask that you um, be with us and lead us and guide us. Help, help us to be watchful of what, what we say and do. Lord, we thank you for all you've done and all you yet to do. Be blessed acts in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. All right. As always, I am Elder Derek Strickland. It's my wish for you that you all be blessed. Then go out there and be a blessing. See you all or you all to see me next week. Peace.